Hey, what's going on, y'all? You know what I mean? Just wanted to come through. Spread some love. Show y'all the Zizab juice in and out. I work out. These are, these are what I'm getting prepared. You know, getting my hands ready, man. Them hands ready. Like the Zab Judah, brother. These are the Judah Judah gloves, man. I'm getting my motherfucking hands. I'm getting my hands like lightning. You know, my trainer is the Judah, the Judah Daddy. Yo, well, that's my trainer, man. You want to prepare me for Mike Tyson. You want to get me ready to put my foot in Mike Tyson's ass. But I said, I want that all now. I met my guy on Facebook, you know, he said, or oh, Instagram. He said, I'm hating on Mike and this and that. I don't hate on Mike, man. You know what I mean? This is business, first of all. Second of all, you know, me and Mike still got a debt to settle. However, as a great man, as a respectable man, Mike Tyson did, you know, put me in his book. My book called Mike Tyson Try to Kill My Daddy. He promoted it. He talked about it. So don't get me wrong. He's a genuine champion. You know what I mean? I take no credit away from him, man. And I appreciate what he did, even though he want to make jokes out of my book and say, oh, you know, I wrote a pamphlet and blah, blah, blah. You know, he wanted, he turned it into a joke because, you know, Mike is actually a comedian too. You know, you see, you know, his last standout show was all about, you know, being a comedian. So God's a comedian anyway. But, you know, uh, bad publicity is better than no publicity. So I, I got to give him a lot of credit, man. And he paid no, he paid his due. He paid his dues enough for me to not to put no lead in his ass. He did do that. I ain't gonna lie. You know what I mean? He, he showed love, man. He did it in Brooklyn style. He came to a resolution. You know what I mean? He knew he was wrong for what he did and ferociously, uh, ripped up my $5,000 mean coat and, you know, and, and got mad that night in Sugar Hill. So, but he, you know, he, he, he as a man, he paid his respect. But, you know, for the man like me, that you know, I'm a legend, man, a legendary dude, man. You know, the reason why I say I'm a legend to you fellas, man, because I don't know if you guys, or, you know, all the old timers from Brooklyn, you know, you know, you know, it, when, when we all hung out at Albee Square Mall, me, N.A. Rod, the real 50 Cent, you know, uh, uh, Rod Kim, every B, all of those dudes, man, hung out in front of my Albee Square Mall back in, what was it, 80, 80, 81, 82, 83, when Albee Square Mall was the shits, man. That's hysteric. Albee Square is hysteric. And before they closed the last year or two, I gotta have, I had a store in Albee Square Mall. I'm one of the, one, probably one of the, you know, uh, only black hood dudes that actually had a store in Albee Square Mall, man. I go down in history, brother, as a businessman, as a man that went out and did his thing, you know, an adult novelty store in Albee Square Mall. So I'm part of history, man. I'm, I'm, that's what you call a true hustler, a genuine entrepreneur. Not only the Albee Square Mall, I had a store in. I had one across the street, too, in the Brooklyn Bazaar. I know a lot of y'all dudes from Brooklyn, you know, you don't know about the, about the Brooklyn Bazaar, the, the jury spot over there across the street where they sold the brothers and the minorities, all that fake gold when dudes was coming up like Rakim and Slick Rick and all those rappers that was coming up. They, they bought from the Brooklyn Bazaar. They bought that jury. A lot of that jewelry was like half gold, half silver inside the motherfucker, man. Those Russians and foreigners and shit, man, they 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 ripped off the, the you know the black people and the minority so bad with that jewelry. That's a historical place over there, the Brooklyn Bazaar. And I was a part of that too. When I had the store in Albee Square Mall, I had a store over there too, so I had two stores. Remember that. That's the kind of entrepreneur I am. I'm a aggressive salesman, businessman. So whether y'all, you know, agrees with this uh, this this conversation or not, I'm going to speak my piece. I'm going to say how I feel and what I do and what I do and I don't do. You know what I mean? So with that being said, I hear Shannon Briggs is going to be fighting Mike Tyson in the bare knuckle context, you know? I mean, Shannon, I don't know. I mean, Mike said, man, I'm going to whip Shannon. Yeah, Shannon can fight now. Shannon ain't no schnauz, man. I don't know why Mike want to even... 
you know, struggle with a guy like that, man. A crazy ass motherfucker like Shannon Briggs, man. Shannon don't come, but, you know, uh, the Mike know that he could slip Shannon's shit and he's gonna probably count, most likely counter Shannon. I think, you know, he can, Shannon gonna come with that wild shit, you know, them hard punches and shit, putting niggas out in one and two rounds. And, you know, Mike is ready to slip it and counter it and knock him out. So Mike feel he's an easy target and Shannon, Feels that he can get him to it, and they could go in a way either way. At this age, they both up in the fifties, so you know, you know, we can't say who's gonna win. It's a toss up. You know what I mean? Best man win, and at the end of the day, both men win when they make that motherfucking money. And with that being said, and I was Shannon Briggs' sparring partner, you know, so I know a little bit about him. You know what I mean? He, he you know, he, you know, I slipped like three, four hundred punches of his. We went about four, five rounds. I slipped about three, four hundred punches on him. He might have hit me with about three or four of them, you know, to the point that he got frustrated. And, you know, he wanted to hit me in the back of the head with the rabbit shots, you know. So I said, I just quit it, left the camp. Said, you know what, give me my, you know, my, you know, give me a couple hundreds for the day, man. I'm out, man. You know what I mean? You, you're not sparring fair, you know, because you see that you can't hit a target. So you frustrated. So you result to illegal shots. So I left. But other than that, says my man, my dog, he got the Let's Go Champ clothing line, you know, and I'm, you know, there to support it and promote it for him. And we're going to get the Let's Go Champ clothing line off the air. He did a great job with that. So he, he definitely deserves a shot at Mike Tyson. You know what I mean? I, I'd rather for him to get the shot than some greasy Peter McNeely lookalike Brad Pitt type motherfucker that. You know what I mean? They ain't really deserve it and, and, and just can't wait to roll over and fucking one round and just take the money and run. And, and all, all the, you know, the businessmen successful, oh, he did the right thing. You know, he rolled over, got that money. Oh, he, but, you know, if a black guy do it, you know, they're a bum. You know, they're going to be considered a bum. So with that being said, you know what I mean? Like I say, man, you know, I ain't, you know, I ain't hating on but I, I think what Mike doing for boxing is a great thing, actually. You know what I mean? I think it's a beautiful thing. To get the box of people roused up, the dude still got that electricity, you know what I mean, and that excitement, and he bringing excitement with his pad work, and you know, and making boxing alive again, man, which is a beautiful thing, man. And you know, I, you know, what I mean, I just wish I could have got a part of it, you know, I, and, and bust, you know, bust a nigga down like I did Butterbane, man, in Madison Square Garden, man, in front of man, those star, what it was, twenty thousand people, when you had Eddie Murphy and and George Foreman and. And all of those people looking on, everybody in the book, man, you know what I mean, was there. All the celebrities, they know they was there. All about 100 celebrities was there. They know who the fuck they is. They know the year that, uh, you know, uh, Toro Gotti versus Tracy Patterson, Shadow Briggs versus, supposed to be Mitch Green, but Mitch Green was afraid of Mike Tyson. He was afraid of Shannon Briggs, so he, he pulled out. And some other big dude that was in the locker room with me, for Shannon and Shannon pounded on a nigga like in one or two rounds of shit, man. Some big goofy motherfucker, man. Some old bitch ass nigga that, you know, just pounded. Man. Big strong motherfucker though, man, but Shannon, man. Pips with pips, pips back that nigga like he did to the majority of his, his opponents. You know, but uh, you know, then who else was on there? We had uh well we uh Toro Gotti, Tracy Patterson, we had uh, oh oh Oscar De La Hoya and uh, Jesse James Lehar fought for the title that night. So it was a historic event. So here I am. I've been involved with a lot of historical events, man. You know what I mean? I'm part of history, man. So why can't I be part of the history? And I'm and knowing that I'm the real king of the four round champion, the belt that Butterbean and Bob Aaron and the manager they stole from me. I'm thinking maybe you know, you know, Mike, I could defend my four king of the four round championship. And, and 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 Mike Tyson fight me, fight. He want to go four rounds. Now he's stepping into my arena. He's stepping into something that I'm that I'm the man. That I'm the one that that you know I'm the king of the four round champion. So when you try to do an exhibition and when you come into the four round zone, bro, you got to pass Mitch Rose. I run that shit. The king of the four round of that 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 division is mine. That's what nigga got to understand that man. So, I mean, I got a right to say something and speak out about it because that is my arena. I'm the man that runs that. And Butterbean know it and Larry Holmes know it. You know what I mean? Larry Holmes fought the so-called 
king of the fourth round, and you know, even though he's about 50 something, he couldn't even knock this motherfucker out. Ten rounds. When I took care of Butter Bean in two rounds. So, you know, come on, man. That means I, they know I am the king of the four round champion. Anybody come in the boxing in the street talking about going four rounds, they got to stay supposed to come see me, man. That's why I'm speaking out what I have to say. Other than that, man, it's all good, brother. Like I say, man, Mike Tyson, man, promoted my book, man, called Mike Tyson Try to Kill My Daddy, man. You know what I mean? That brother did some Brownville love, and I'm not mad at him. I don't hate him. I love him like I love all my black people and sisters and brothers and everybody in the world. I'm not an angry guy. Right, Chuck? Look at this guy. I'm not, I'm not an angry guy. No way. I'm just telling you, man. I'm just defending my crown, brother. The real king of the four-round champion, Mitch Rose. Better believe that shit.